we'll take questions from the folks here. Right. <clears throat> Congressman. Hello. You talked about cutting a trillion dollars out of the budget. What do you cut in order not to spend that trillion dollars? In order not to spend a trillion. Well, we've documented in our, in our plan, but basically about half comes from overseas. It cuts back on militarism, but not defense. So we don't think we hurt defense at all. But we close down all the bases. We just come home and quit fighting the wars. That's a big hunk of money. And uh, we go back to 06 uh, budget line. Instead of having automatic increases, you know, the automatic uh, budget increases over the next 10 years, like 10, 12 trillion dollars, ours is to do the opposite, lower the trend line and go back to 06 and then get rid of five departments of it, you know, five departments. And this will, this will get you a trillion dollars. If you cut the spending by a trillion dollars, how long does it take you to do an almost $16 trillion debt? Well, they, that, that probably won't shrink the debt itself. Uh, what, what it does is just gets your budget balanced in three years. So it hasn't even, that's how big the problem is. So, but it stops the bleeding. Uh, right now, you, you know, there's no effort to cut. The, they're, they're only proposing to cut and tinker around the edges on the proposed increases. And now that we have the statistic out that our uh, GDP to, uh, cap, you know, per capita is worth in Greece in this country. It's greater than the debt. That's how serious the problem is. And nobody wants to cut anything because they've been taught that cutting is bad when you're in a recession. And I try to make the point that after World War II, it's exactly the opposite occurring. You've been asked a couple times about this now with what Senator Santorum is saying is some sort of alliance between you and Governor Romney, and you've laughed it off. But <laughs> given that you and, and the governor are different in so many ways, why aren't you going after him harder? or bringing up some of the differences. I think most of that has been sort of concocted because, uh, you know, I think my first ad was uh, directed toward him as a flip-flopper, and uh, I don't hesitate to say that there's not much we agree with, maybe partially on taxes, at least he wants to go in the right direction and cut some taxes. But no, he, he and I don't agree on foreign policy or monetary policy. Uh, but. I think it's uh, best for my campaign to go after people who are taking, who are the so-called anti-Romney votes. So, uh, you know, there used to be nine. <laughs> now there's only four of us. So if we can whittle that down a little bit, uh, then uh, the contest between, you know, becomes more uh, two of us. You've had uh, two very large uh, rallies so far, uh, really good attendance-wise. Um, do you expect the same tomorrow, and will you come to Ohio and campaign the same way ahead of Ohio's primary for Super but Tuesday? To tell you the truth, I'm not the best one to ask my exact schedule. <laughs> uh, it, it's possible, but I don't know what is on the schedule because I know right now we're thinking about three or four more uh, states that are, uh, uh, you know, caucus states, and I know I'm going back to the state of Washington. I think I'm going to Alaska, and uh, we have to go where we can pick up delegates. And so far, uh, we're doing quite well. We're uh, recognized to be in second place for the delegates who have committed them, who are committed. Dr. Paul, NATO and the U.S. have pulled all personnel out of the Afghan ministries uh, after two U.S. soldiers were murdered. Uh, this morning, Senator McCain said we have to take the long view and that a strategic partnership agreement is needed before we can leave Afghanistan. How do we reach an agreement with a government we don't trust? We don't, we don't trust them, and they really don't exist. I mean, Karzai is hardly the government. I mean, he, could, he couldn't win election. So, uh, no, it's chaos, and uh, we are responsible for much of the chaos. So I would say that uh, the sooner we get out of there, the better, and uh, not lose any more lives. So you believe we don't need a, a strategic partnership with, the, with Afghanistan before pulling no, all the troops out? No, I mean, uh, someday they might be more stable and want to talk to us. And But, but I don't like these mutual uh, defense treaties anyway, but a mutual friendship and trade, yes, we should always have that as, as an open option. But uh, to think that we're going to keep uh, using troops over there and dying and spending us our money and going bankrupt until we get the guy in the government that, uh, that, that somebody wants, it's not going to work. Dr. Paul, on Tuesday you head to Virginia. That's a unique opportunity for you to go one-on-one -on -one with Romney. Other people were not successful in getting on the ballot. Your thoughts on that? On Virginia, mm -hmm. I had a chance to go. That you're, you're you're going on Tuesday, aren't you? Oh, I'm. Oh, yeah. You know, for our rally on Tuesday night. Yes. Um, 
you could be one and one with Romney. Yeah, that, that, that is the case. That, uh, we, we will because nobody else is in, in Virginia, but uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tougher job, you know, to uh, spend a lot of money statewide. So uh, we will go and we will work, but to uh, what extent, I don't know exactly. What's a strong showing for you here in Michigan, do you think? Well, I haven't come up with a number on that, uh, just so we get some delegates. <laughs> you said you support a national right to work law. What's your argument for that concept? Well, it's actually repealing the authority given to the artificial power given to unions under the National Labor Relations Act. So it would repeal that. So it's called a National Right to Work Act, but it's actually repealing artificial authority uh, given to unions to have an automatic closed shop by a 51% vote. I don't know, somebody may have asked this because I came in a little late, my apologies for that. Um, what do you think sets you apart versus the other candidates? Well, most people don't have much trouble figuring that out. <laughs> First, the foreign policy, dramatically different. And uh, it's a foreign policy of non-intervention. It's a foreign policy designed to bring about peace and to save a lot of money and, and uh, work our way out of this terrible economy. Civil liberties, nobody else is talking about the National Defense Authorization Act or the Patriot Act. And, and so civil liberties, uh, a distinct difference between not only the other Republicans, but all the Democrats as well in the, uh, you know, Obama or anybody in the Senate. So the parties are exactly the same. Monetary policy, I'm the one that addresses the uh, serious flaw in the monetary system that creates the bubbles and the inevitable recessions and depressions. So there's a lot of difference. I'm the only one that's offering a real cut in how the budget. You, how do you think those things will impact Michigan, those changes that you want to well, make? Well, if, if they hear the message and understand that they're going to be uh, uh, super supportive because uh, I don't see any way we, we can get out of this mess other than this way. Congressman Mitt Romney has been running um, second to Rick Santorum in a lot of polls in this state, and Newt Gingrich has suggested that uh, Romney should just drop out and forget it all if he can't even win his home state. What are your thoughts on that? I I don't uh, think it's my business to tell Romney when he's supposed to drop out or 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 whatever. No, I think that's political talk, and I don't do too much of that. Talk to me about how you would reform the monetary policy. You were pretty clear during your speech, but. Just thinking about it, it seems like a, a really daunting task because generations of people are used to this monetary. Yeah. Well, the daunting problem is continue to do what we do and have runaway inflation and destruction of a currency. That is what people should fear. Uh, but uh, even though, and the Fed is popular, and I talk about the Fed, my position, if you read about it, it's not quite that way. I think the Fed will self-destruct and, and it'll disappear someday. But I advocate competition with the Fed, allowing a parallel currencies to operate like they do worldwide. You have euros and yens and dollars. Well, you could do that domestically. And then if people didn't want to save in a, in a Federal Reserve note bond because it just loses value, maybe they could save in a gold bond. And, uh, and this, is, uh, th this is something that allows a transition period. Uh, but if we were serious and wanted to move quick, more quickly, you could look at the history uh, after Civil War. They went off gold in 1861. They had a Restoration Act in 1875. It took three years. They quit printing money. Uh, they didn't have debt, and they withdrew some greenbacks. And the gold price went like from $200 an ounce down to $20 an ounce. It was a total non-event. But conditions were different. It wouldn't be that easy today, but that's available if they did what I say about spending cuts, you know, bring the troops home and have a different foreign policy, change the entitlement system. You could do that, but right now the best thing is to allow people to use constitutional money. Uh, today, when people try to use gold and silver, they can get arrested because the Federal Reserve note, which you can't define, nobody knows what a dollar is. There's no, no legal definition of a dollar. Uh, it used to be defined in, in terms of, of gold. But uh, if, you, if you start using gold and silver as money, you get arrested and, and your gold and silver can be confiscated. Okay. Right, thanks, guys. Very good. Did you, say, did you say your brother lives here? In yeah, uh, he um, he's retired here. He had a church in uh, in um, Detroit for 20 years or so. And he's been over here about 10 years, and he was an assistant pastor. And uh, 
he uh, he's with me today. But that's not why you decided to campaign in Michigan. Uh, I, I guess. Hardly, because we, uh, <laughs> but it was nice that we could come. Sure. I mean, we, we did because he, he doesn't live too far from here. Uh, but uh, we have three events tomorrow. You, you know, across the state. Did you stay? Did you stay there? Did you stay with your brother? Yeah, we did. Or, <laughs> thank we you, sir. We don't see each other very often. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Good seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Paul.